Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, and welcome to the second in my series of a number of Arch Linux related videos, from my recent move from the Windows and .NET Framework world to running on Linux and using .NET Core. Today I'm going to cover in a minute .NET Core, Visual Studio Code, how to get it up and running on Arch Linux. It's super easy, it's not going to take more than a couple of minutes. So I wanted to kind of put a bit around that and say, well, why .NET Core? Why do I like it and why Linux on it? So Microsoft came up with the .NET framework in the very early 2000s. And I have to say it's been my favourite development framework for a very long time. The c -sharp language is my preferred language for it, there are other choices. But c -sharp as a language structure I've always found particularly nice. Java was always a little bit clunky and I never liked it, but I liked the idea of having it run in a virtual machine, not what we call a virtual machine now, but in terms of instruction based rather than fully compiled it goes into bytecode and it's the same with the .NET world. Now the idea with that when .NET was created is theoretically you can run .NET code on anywhere where there is a, a bytecode virtual machine that can run it underneath. But that didn't really happen. What we ended up with was Mono coming in, replicating most of the .NET framework, so you could run .NET stuff on Linux, but it was never an official way of doing it, and it never felt quite right. The performance was never felt quite there either, but it was a functional way of getting it going. However, a few years ago, under new CEO, Microsoft completely changed their tone, fully embraced open source software, and came out with .NET Core, which is a much more lightweight version of the .NET framework. It cuts out some of the gumph that's not necessarily used very often, including desktop applications. But actually, it supports, for me, 99.999% of what I do on a daily basis. The only thing that's really lacking is where I've had desktop development work. And they bought it to as an open source framework so it can run on Linux, you can theoretically run it on BSD, Windows, so you do your code once and it runs anywhere, just like with JVM. But finally it's open source and it's fully supported by Microsoft. Now out of the box there are packages for other Linux distributions but not for Arch, however as we'll see in a sec it is really easy to get it up and running. I love the .NET framework and as a consequence .NET Core. I still think it is the most productive way to be a developer in a strict type based language. I'm not a fan of going and having a bunch of complex backends running on Node.js. I still don't believe that TypeScript, it, JavaScript, is the right way for doing backend stuff. And I think Python and stuff is great if you're looking for some kind of small project. C++, I think it's overkill in a horrible language. And I definitely do think there is place for compiled languages. There's plenty of our infrastructure and stack that runs with that. But if I can pick anywhere I like to work, it is definitely C Sharp and sitting on top of .NET. I have used plenty of Java as well, it just never feels quite right. It always feels just that bit more cumbersome for me than it does doing things with .NET. So I was over the moon when open source version of that came out. And now we're up to version 2.1, it's suddenly a lot more featureful and it's really easy to move over. So the last month or so of my life has been converting all of our Windows services, applications, APIs into .NET Core, which was surprisingly easy, along with our associated libraries and then wrapping them all up in Docker containers for easy deployment to Linux systems. Now I've explained what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, I guess let's do the quick video on actually installing it. So here's how you get it up and running. So if you watched the video last time, this is pretty much where we left our installation of Arch Linux. Or if you've got your own installation of Arch Linux, the principles are the same. This is currently just a generic desktop version of Arch. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to install Visual Studio Code, which is Microsoft's IDE that runs on multiple platforms. So if we have a look on the Arch Wiki, there is a page already there discussing Visual Studio Code and the different versions of it. Now, there's not much information there, but one of the key things to draw from this is there's actually three different packages you can use. There is Code, Visual Studio Code Bin, and Code Git. Now, if you're still new to Arch, this AUR is an important thing to note. This means that it's the Arch user repository. So this is packages that you can run on your system that have been put together by another user of Arch rather than as part of the core operating system. So that would make you think that the package you would probably want to go for is code, but not necessarily. So here's the difference. 
Code is the official package put together by Arch. It's built from source and it's built in a way so that all the directory structures and everything else line up with what you'd expect for any Arch package. Visual Studio Code Bin is simply downloading the binary files for Visual Studio from Microsoft and then all the dependencies that are required for them so they will run on an Arch system. Finally, Code Git actually pulls down all the source from Git and builds it from scratch. Now there is one really, really important thing here. If you're gonna be doing Microsoft.NET development, the debugger will only work on the official signed binaries from Microsoft. That means if you want to debug C Sharp code and .NET code, you're gonna to have to use this Visual Studio code bin option. If you run code or code git, you'll get all kinds of errors and debugging won't work. It'll give you really cryptic results. So it's really important, unless you're gonna be doing everything other than .NET, that you go with Visual Studio Code Bin. So that means we're gonna be using an Arch user repository package. So let's click on it first of all and see the information we get. Now what you come up with here is details about the package and its dependencies and a bunch of frequently asked questions and things people are asking. We're gonna be nice and simple today and just kind of crack on with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is this git clone URL. We're gonna right click and we're gonna do copy link location. Then we're gonna go into our terminal and we're going to make a new folder in our home directory called AUR. Go into AUR and we're going to do git clone and we're going to do that path that we just right clicked on. And what that's going to do is download all the information that's needed to pull that package. Then if we do an ls we'll see we've got that new folder created. So we'll go into Visual Studio Code Bin and then in here are all the files that describe how to build the package. So if we look at the package build file, that tells Arch all the steps it's going to do in order to put this package together, where to download it from, what to do. It's always a good idea to check that, make sure it's not doing anything silly or downloading things you don't want it to do when it's an external third party package. Once you're happy with that, what we're gonna do is actually create the package and install it. Now you can do this with a one shot command, make package dash SIRC. S means synchronize all the dependencies that are required for it. So where there's this big list here, that means all of those will be installed as required rather than complaining they're not there. I means install it. R means remove any dependencies that were needed solely for the build and not required afterwards. And C means clean everything up before you do it in case you've previously already done something in this folder. So generally those are the flags I always use when doing a make package. You don't need to run this as sudo. In fact, it won't let you do it as sudo. If you, it's gonna sudo at some point and ask for a password, it will ask you to enter at that point in time. So always run this on your user account. So we do make package, it gives us the information about what it's gonna install, ask whether we want to proceed, Y and then enter. And then what that's gonna do is go off, download the required packages, as well as downloading the Visual Studio code package and start installing that. So we're pretty much gonna do a jump cut here as this is just a bunch of boring downloads. Okay, and that took about four minutes to get this far. It's now created the package and the package is ready to be installed. So you get prompt once again, are you ready to do the install? Yep. And now it's just doing exactly the same as if we're installing a package with Pac-Man. Installing that package has been created, bang, done, Visual Studio Code is installed. So before we use it for doing .NET development, we also need to install the .NET runtime and the .NET SDK. So if we take a look again at the Arch Wiki, there is a page on .NET Core, not much on it, but it tells you the package names. It says there's a package called .NET-Runtime, which lets you run .NET applications, and a package called .NET-SDK, that lets you develop them. So easy enough to install, we just do sudo pacman-s .NET runtime and .NET SDK. Whack enter. Do you want to proceed with the install? Yep. And now uh, we're going to do another jump cut because this is going to go and download another 50 mega files. There we are a minute or two later and .NET's now installed. So we've got the .NET command, we can now run .NET on Linux. So the next thing we want to do really, I guess, is load up Visual Studio Code and take a very quick look at it. So that will now be installed in our applications menu here. Or if you want to launch it yourself, you can just run code from a command prompt and that will spawn a new instance of it. Visual Studio Code will then start up. And then this is a fully fledged IDE. So we can open, I guess, a folder if you want to do to start with it. 
this is probably not what I normally edit with it, but I haven't got any code on here. And you've just got a standard kind of folder list on the right hand side, go into stuff and see it the same as you can in any other ID. What you probably want to do though, if you're doing .NET development in a minute, is install some extensions for that, because out of the box it comes with no language support. So if we search for C Sharp, we definitely want the C Sharp extension. We click the green install badge and install it. We also might want C Sharp extensions, C Sharp fixed format, and C Sharp XML document generation. You can click on them all and read and see which ones make sense for you. You might want C Sharp snippets as well. Click install. And then once they're all installed, you'll be able to press the reload button that will actually let you use it. So if we click on reload, all those come in and we've then got support for C Sharp installed on our system. If you're going to do some Docker development in C Sharp as well, I highly recommend that you also search for the Docker extension and pop that on because that will let you actually manage Docker containers from within Visual Studio Code as well. Job's done, that's installing. This is pretty much Visual Studio Code. I'm not gonna give a full walkthrough of how to use Visual Studio Code and what it's for, as that's, I'm sure, covered by many other videos on YouTube, but this shows you how to get it up and running in Linux. And within, if I'd actually got a decent internet connection tonight, within two minutes, even 10 minutes otherwise, you've got Visual Studio Code, you're good to go, you can build and debug .NET applications. Job's done. And that's it, super easy, right? Moving from Visual Studio full to Visual Studio Code definitely has downsides. Visual Studio Code is an all right IDE. I think may need a lot of a learning curve for me to get to learn some of the features and functionality, but in terms of debugging and multiple processes, and there's ways to do it, but it feels a bit clunky. But you know, one's a 6,000 pound solution or requires an MSDN subscription, and the other one is a free download, so you can understand why. All in all, I can do 90% of what I want to do well, and the other 10% I can fudge around. So I think it's just gonna take me a bit of time to get used to. It's certainly not enough to make me want to go back to running Visual Studio in a virtual machine as the development way, as that was a lot less productive. The best thing is it's been a great opportunity to take more advantage of Docker in my day-to-day -day life rather than just using it in fewer obscure scenarios, and now that's kind of fully part of our development and release paradigm, which is a great thing. So it's been really good moving to the kind of .NET Core version on Linux and getting everything up and running with that. Hopefully you found kind of the quick run through of how to get Visual Studio Code, .NET Core, .NET SDK kind of all installed and running. And next time I'm gonna cover how to get Microsoft SQL Server up and running on Arch, which is again, a really quick one. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.